Um, hello again and welcome. My name is Tomio Hayasa Izu, and I'm going to be one of your MCs for the night. I'm the other MC. My name is Erica Boas. All right, and so on behalf of San Jose Nikkei Resistors, I would like to welcome you to this afternoon's program where, where we, we will be discussing and celebrating the publication of NCRR, The Grassroots Struggle for Japanese American Redress and um, Reparation. Um, we have Richard Katsuda, who is a longtime member of the LA NCRR and retired after 30 years as a continuation high school teacher at LA Unified School District. He's also the former executive director of UITI, was active in the early 70s and early 80s, um, sorry, late 70s and early 80s to the Lake Committee. The spirit of the Issei Nisei Sansei, who've been served for all these years here with love and compassion by the Japan, their fellow Japanese Americans serving them. I mean, it's just that spirit is here within among us. And so it's that same spirit that NCR is all about, that um, we f have always felt very strongly about repairing the dignity, self-respect, and general well-being and health of Japanese Americans. Because we know that, that all of that was torn apart during World War II. And even though most of us in NCR um, were younger sons at the time and worked with many Nisei within NCR, but those of us who were uh, the younger sons grew up after the war and didn't really know much about that experience. In 2009, we asked Lane Hidabayashi if he would help us with a book. He was a professor at UCLA. And he said, give me three years. I, I can't do it now. So we said, OK. Because he had been a part of NCRR. So we wanted really to work with someone like that. And um, so we waited three years. And then in 2012, we put out the call for stories. We asked people to write. And I have to write at the outset, apologize, because this is a very LA-centered uh, book. But we do feel that the stories in here reflect really the experiences of all the different chapters of NCRR. So people formed the Nihon Machi Outreach Committee in order to inform people and try to get uh, people in the Japanese community to uh, be involved in that. And so that was a very grassroots effort. And uh, so we were uh, ripe to start working on redress from a grassroots perspective. Um, I got involved in NOC in 1979 after going to the Tule Lake pilgrimage where people were debating uh, redress and I had never heard of such a thing but uh, it was just kind of transformational. So our next speaker um, represents the ways in which, which arts, culture, and identity can move a community. Um, she is Tracy Kato Kiriyama a Sansei performance artist, writer, actor, arts educator, poet, and the director and co-founder of the Tuesday Night Project in Little Tokyo. She's organizer for the Generations of War Project in association with students from Glenn Omatsu's Asian American Social Movements course at UCLA, contributor for the <coughs> Through the Fire column in the Rafu Shinpo, and actor writer with touring theater show Pull, Tales of Obsession. Let's welcome her who are you? Older and a bit odd. A far cry from what I was used to when looking upon the J.A. Elder. They spoke in long verse, a hybrid of revolutionary and school teacher. My teenage mind was ravenous. I needed answers and they looked chock full. Who are you and where have you been all my life? All I wanted was to follow them at their heels, watch them in action, study what they studied. They were the real deal. Righteous baby boomers, slayers of injustice, modest orators with holsters toting pamphlets and petitions. They had more than circled the block. I was a tiny fool who just didn't know they had been there all along. <clears throat> Number three, Atanka. Flags fly a fire. Practice pushes against code. Our theory grows ears. Compassion dances with rage. We let our hearts carry both. Number six, the essay. 
I always think I'm going to say no to them. They tell me they have an idea to do something different or special for the next day of remembrance and that they'd like to meet up. I get an instantly warm feeling in my chest. Not necessarily the warm, fuzzy kind of warm, more of an, uh-oh, I don't know if I have time for this <laughs> feeling that makes me take a bit of a deep breath. NCRR tends to think about approaching a DOR with a lot of meaning and depth, but sometimes without a whole lot of lead time <laughs> and with even less budget. <laughs> they are what I consider old school, and everyone does almost everything on their own time out of their own pocket. I can definitely respect that, as director for a grassroots all-volunteer effort called the Tuesday Night Project, NCRR has been a model for me in helping to shape the way we work, trying to do a lot with clear intention and depth, while allowing ourselves freedom from spending too much time on raising large amounts of money we'd need if we wanted to manage a staff and a nonprofit organization. This model literally takes a community to build the community work, and while difficult in its own right, the process is fruitful. I wonder if you could talk about the transition from um, NCRR to Nikkei for Civil Rights. Um, in terms of while JCL has become more progressive, it's really been NCRR that has been the advocate in terms of looking at the post-redress legacy of civil rights. Um, well, we were, let's see, 1990 about there is when we became Nikkei for Civil Rights and Redress because um, you know, in LA, we were a little bit of involved in Little Tokyo, and we knew that there were just a lot of issues that we were going to continue to, to deal with. But also because of the denials, and you talked about people coming out. A lot of people came out during that period of time when the Office of Redress Administration came to the community to, and we learned about a lot of cases that uh, people who had been denied.